So, I'm recording this to show you the stock performance of my 4790K. This is where we're going to start off in this quick, gritty, dirty how to overclock tutorial for beginners. 840, that ain't high enough, Baylor. You need more than that for the performance. Okay, so the stock numbers are 840 for this. It, there's a ton of variables. Yes, I know if I would have closed these two, it would have been a little higher. But I wanted those just to show numbers. Stock, 4 gigahertz speed with 4.4 .4 turbo boost. And I have temperatures over here. Maximum temperature reached was 54 degrees. Let's go ahead and uh, get to overclocking, shall we? Hello, everybody. You are listening to Editing Scargun, because regular Scargun is a fucking idiot and doesn't know how to tell you how to do shit. This is how you will get to your bio screen, aka your UEFI setting screen. Wow, <laughs> the video quality is so much better when I screen capture. <laughs> okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to restart your computer, which is normal. You just restart your computer. But at the boot up screen, it's going to show you like your motherboard logo. Hit delete or F1 or F2 or whatever the button is that takes you into your BIOS or UEFI setting. If for some reason your computer does that bullshit thing that mine does and will not let your keyboard register until its drivers load up, this is the easiest way to get to it. You go up to your corner and do this. Aha, see I've got this thing over here. Uh, or you could just go into PC settings over here, you know, but I prefer this since it's there. Settings. You're going to go down to change PC setting. You're going to go into, well, I'll go into it this way. Update and recovery. Recovery. Advanced startup. Advanced options. UEFI firmware. Restart. Once it restarts, it's going to take you here. This is where you would normally hit delete, but this is where it takes you when you do hit delete. What you're going to run into is this screen right here. Once you're in here, you will see a bunch of different settings. Leave it on simple. That's what I do because I am simple. You're going to see your CPU frequency. You're going to see a base clock setting, megahertz. What it is to get your clock speed it is base clock setting multiplied by CPU ratio. When you get that, it takes you to your 4000 because stock CPU ratio is 40 on this chip. It will take you to 8, you go up to your 40, there is your stock speed. Now from there, you can go, whoops, you can go. 4.7 megahertz, gigahertz, whatever. I see megahertz, 4,700 megahertz, which 1,000 megahertz is one gigahertz. If you're, if you don't know that, you might not want to be playing around with this, but you know, it's pretty foolproof. You go down to your 100, and usually you can squeeze a few megahertz out of it if you mess with your base clock. So um, I will show you my handy dandy go-to overclock that I use for everything load profile so for my overclock it's a 4.85 gigahertz um, my RAM is at 2133 megahertz up from 1866 it runs flawlessly I have no issues with this no stability problems whatsoever my voltage is something else I need to show you once you hit a certain amount of megahertz, it's going to become unstable and start doing weird things like maybe sputtering or skipping or just completely just saying fuck it and locking up completely. Nothing you can do about that yet. Come into here. Play with your CPU core voltage. Go up in intervals of 0.025. And go up a little higher if you're a little ballsy. If you have a water cooling loop like I do, you can go a little farther because heat isn't really an issue. More voltage equals more heat. 
if you throw 2.0 volts at something, not only will it probably kill it, your computer probably won't boot, it will overheat it. You need to worry about heat versus voltage versus speed. And it's, uh, once you get up to where you're like right on the jagged edge of stability, that's, you're going to start worrying about it. So, when you get to your desktop, you will, uh, I'll just show you. Open up all of your tools, all of your toys that you want to play with, and check out your your uh, stats to make sure you are running where you want to be. So I've got CPU-C here with 4.825 gigahertz. I've got hardware monitor over here showing temperatures. Sometimes people have problems with hardware monitor. With temperatures, I don't. It doesn't seem to be an issue. Um, my voltage is also the same on both. People say that there's an issue with that. I haven't ran into it on this computer, but on my wife's computer I have, and on my brother-in-law's computer I have, so maybe mine just likes to be played with more. Fuck, I don't know. Alright guys, let's see Razer Synapse has an update. I don't care. Let's go ahead and run that CPU bench. I might put music here. You know, you know what? I won't. Maybe I will. Alright guys, I got my 959. I went from, what was it, 840 to 959, so I jumped up about 129 points, something like that. Yeah, so that's, uh, you know, it's noticeable. It's, uh, it puts me in Skylake range, if, if not just a little bit over. Actually, it is a little bit over Skylake range. Um, I will go ahead and do this. CPU-Z has a bench in it. Uh, no. Okay, so temperature-wise, I got up to 80, guys. It's, uh, voltage. It'll get you there. It'll, it'll get you there quick. But, uh, as you can see with water cooling, I'm right back down to 30. So, benching. Bench CPU. That's gonna go ahead and throw a little bench at it. Single thread versus multi-thread, and it's gonna tell me where I'm at. Single thread, I got a 2208 multi-thread I'm going to have a 94 something 63 now if I go down to a 6700k you see it's stock performance versus my 4790k's overclock performance you can make of that what you will but the way I see it is because of the overclock I have on this 4790k there is absolutely no reason to upgrade I want to thank you especially for watching this video <laughs> Even though it is uh, down and dirty, um, I will tell you that uh, you will do this at your own risk. Um, don't come complaining to me if you put 18 billion volts through your processor and for some reason it burn out. I'm uh, sorry if that happens, but you know, I, I, I've never fried a processor. Uh, except for ones that I've done it on purpose just to see how hot it would get. I could just take the heat sink off and just cook that bastard.